All right, and then we have more. My next guest is one of America's finest actors. He's starred in so many fantastic movies from uh, Gangs of New York and with Will Ferrell, he's in Talladega Nights to his Oscar-nominated performance in Chicago. Now, he nearly didn't make it here tonight as he's suffering from the norovirus. Ladies and gentlemen, we won't be touching him, but we're happy to have him with us, <laughs> Mr John C. Wiley. <laughs> Look at that. Bravely, thank you for making it in. I know how awful it is. Happy to be here. But yeah, it's a horrible thing. When did it kick in? Uh, this morning. I, actually, I can't believe I'm here. If you, if you saw the condition of me this morning... Wow. Is the phrase, the sluice is opened at both ends, wow. mean anything? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm here. I'm very happy to be here. And, uh, <laughs> and if I can get through without making sick... Well, then, you know uh, what? If you do have to make sick, or if the sluice has to open at the other end, do it there in the green room. Oh, okay. <laughs> John C. Wiley, ladies and gentlemen, I'm thrilled he's on the show. Thank you for coming, John. Great to have you here. Hey. I don't care about the virus. I'm going in for a hug. How you doing? John C. Wiley, great. I'm so pleased you made it. Come and sit yourself down. Take a load off. Well, I'm thank just you. Gonna make a quick call, Jonathan. One <laughs> second. <laughs> Hello. Oh, where's, where's my orange phone? <laughs> Uh, you know, I showed a clip there, Step Brothers, which I didn't see when it first came out. I only saw that recently. What a great film, and what a great on-screen chemistry there is between you and Will. Did you know each other for a while before you started making yeah, movies? We, yeah, we knew each other socially. We met when he was still on Saturday Night Live, and, yeah, where's our Christmas picture? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was my mom's sweater. I took the shoulder pads out. That's what my character says. <laughs> So, uh, I've seen... You, uh, you've made a few films together. Will you make more? I would hope that we would see you on screen again. I hope so. They're, they're working on the uh, sequel to Anchorman right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, Adam and Will. Yeah. <laughs> but you weren't in the first one. No, it was meant to be, and then uh, I was off doing, actually, uh, I think The Aviator with Martin Scorsese, so I thought, well, I better just stick with a good thing. <laughs> But I do regret it. I really do regret yeah. it. So they're going to put you in the sequel? I hope so. You know, there's, there's that whole scene, there's that gang fight in the original one, yeah, yeah. which was based on Gangs of New York, another <laughs> movie I was in. So we'll see. Maybe I'll be in the gang You've fight. You've been now. in so many movies, though. I mean, for years. You know, there was a, barely an independent movie that came out of America that didn't have you in. I thought maybe there was some kind of quota. Maybe you had some kind of a deal with them. Because you were in... So, I mean, how many movies were you making? Just dumb luck, I guess. Yeah, in 2002, at the Oscars, I was in three of the best five wow. pictures of that year. I, well, which I has never been done before. Wow. Incredible. The new movie you're in, of course, you're in, but you're not in, in a way. It's a kind of... It's an right. unusual thing, because uh, it's a new Disney movie. Uh, it's out now. It's called Wreck-It Ralph. I saw it uh, last year. I was desperate to see it because of the subject matter. Explain uh, what the premise is. Well, it takes place in the world of video games, not just, like, modern-day video games, but video games back in the heyday, you know, when, when I was playing video games. In the early days. In the late 70s. It was 8-bit kind of arcade games. Anyway, my character is this guy, Ralph, who's the bad guy in a video game called Fix-It Felix Jr. The whole object of the game is to fix this building before R Ralph destroys it. And he has this, like, midlife crisis. After 30 years of being a bad guy, he just decides, like, it doesn't feel good to be the bad guy. Like, I want people to like me. I want, I want to be the hero every once in a while. And so he goes off on this forbidden journey. He leaves his game. He goes through the power cord of the game and goes into other video games in the arcade. So he gets much more than he bargains for, and Sarah Silverman plays this little girl in this Brilliant. kind of Candyland game called Sugar Rush, and we, uh, we become unlikely friends, and we kind of help each other. Well, let's have a look at a clip, because it's really great fun, but it's also it's surprisingly moving. I found it very touching. Well, thanks. Well. We yeah. tried really hard to make it have some heart and yeah. not just be some big, loud, no. crazy, kinetic thing. It looks great. It is loud and crazy and kinetic, but it's also you right. And what's so lovely about the film is that you see all of the characters from kind of all of the games. If ever you play video games or be in arcade, you'll recognise that there was Pac-Man in that there, of course, and yeah. so many of the different characters. It really kind of sort of grounds it in the reality of the world. Yeah, a lot of people are really excited to see their favourite characters, whether it's Sonic Hedgehog or, you know, uh, Tapper. You know that game Tapper? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you ever <laughs> played that oh, that's game. That's the beer game where they... Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's an odd game for kids in an arcade, like... <laughs> Drink your beer! Right. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I thought I, I wanted to test you. I have some sound effects, so some oh, dear. Music from very early video games. All right. Let's see if you know any of these. Okay, have a listen. Let's play the first one. 
That's Donkey Kong. No. Super Mario? Play, play Hold a bit on. More. Play I have more. a lifeline. Play. I'm going to get them all wrong. Tetris. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Give it away. Be, well, I, that's what I was doing, giving it away. But the beginning bit, it did sound like that. We didn't give you enough of it, and you got the Noah virus. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, Nora? Is it like a little girl named Nora? It's like, <laughs> let's make him vomit again. <laughs> Have a... <laughs> it's just so, put such a personal name, Nora. No, like, it's not Noah. It's, it's no O. It's not Noah. Noah. Oh, 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 it's not oh, oh. Noah's virus. <laughs> it's a Josh virus. <laughs> it's the Henry virus. OK, let's go. I'm enjoying this gun now. Let's have some more of this. That's Pac-Man. That is Pac-Man. That was pretty good. That was incredible. <laughs> Highly annoyed, there. Do you want to do Take another that, one? Nora. You OK with another one? Yes. Here we go. Let's have another one. Ah, oh, that's Space Invaders. Yes! That's an old favorite. Wow. Oh. I do know this stuff. Are there prizes given out for this or something? Yes, like, you will win like... a banana which has been infected with the Noah virus. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you're no one. You must have spent... You're clearly the type... Because you used to... <laughs> no. I love them too! I love them too, but you used to spot buses for pleasure. You were a bus spotter. <laughs> I used to spot buses, and once I got a fuse box for my birthday. Wow. <laughs> I don't know whether we should even put that out. That's too heartbreaking, isn't it? <laughs> A fuse box for your That's what I wanted. A fuse box? It had four fuses in it. I used to wire my shed up. <laughs> it wasn't on a list you put out, was it? You didn't actually ask for it, did you? I did. I asked for a fuse box. Oh. I think I asked for an eight-way, eight but, you know, you can spoil a child. Yeah, anyway, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's see if that fuse box worked well enough to power a video game. Let's have a listen. We can do one more. Anyone in there who knows this one? Are you ready? Let's play it. Wow, Hayley got it straight out of the... How did that happen? Of course, it's... Well, did you even finish? Did you get it? No. <laughs> uh, so, John, when John comes over, this is something I admire about you, you make these uh, trips fun for yourself. You come over to do press. Hopefully, you quite enjoy the experience of that. Hopefully, yeah. you enjoy the so fact... So far, we, so good. ...we made you sit here with this, flu this and This morning, doing one interview after the other where I wasn't sure if I was going to spew was not that fun, yeah. but... This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why I think so is you come over, you, you always perform. You bring your band or you, you hook up with the band and well, you perform over here? Yeah, you know, I realised at some point, like, I can bring whoever I want, you know, rather than being a hairstylist, which is important for me, uh, <laughs> I decided, like, I have this band. Why don't I bring my friends with me? We do do shows. I have done a few here in the United Kingdom and we're going to do one more in Glasgow on Tuesday night at St. Andrews on the Square. And this is what, your own music or R&B covers, that kind of thing? No R&B. It's uh, old traditional music, <laughs> old folk music. <laughs> I thought you might do a bit of R&B. Hey, I've know. got some R&B in yeah, me, but man. just not with this band. Okay. We do, like, old, old country songs and old traditional folk music and bluegrass music and... A lot of harmony and yeah. all around one microphone. It's really fun. Before we let you go, you mentioned your hair. Uh, that, and is it a Please, let's talk about my hair. Is it a problem for you, your hair? I mean, I like curly hair, but it's, uh, I guess there's not much you can do with it. It's not a problem for me. I can't see it. <laughs> you know, it's a problem for other people. It tends to, it'll take on shapes, you know. You can adjust it. You know, one thing I, my kids recently pointed out to me was, they said, Dad, your eyebrows do this weird thing. Here, I'll show you. Like, this is like... This is the calm, happy me, yeah? And then he goes... This is the crazy me. <laughs> I don't know, I, I worked a long time to get those eyebrows like that. So I'm very well, proud of that. I'm glad we got to see them. Uh, yeah. The movie Wreck Up is just great fun. I loved it. Uh, and I love meeting you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr John C. Wiley. We'll let you go home, go back to the hotel, get some sleep. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to touch skin. Yeah. Thank you so much. John C. Wiley, ladies and gentlemen. You go and get yourself well. Okay, we're just going to get this ready. We're, gonna, we're just going to get this ready for the next guest. <laughs> Don't take this personally, John. Thank you. Okay, uh, after the break, I'll be joined by Hayley Atwell on our newly disinfected couch, so don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, Hayley Atwell will be coming out in just a minute, but first, I thought, you know, we have uh, one of the greatest scientific minds in the green room, Brian Cox. I'll be chatting to him a while, but I thought maybe the other guests might want to join him before he comes out here. So, uh, I have a scientific question for you, and, and I'm going to encourage you... Oh, John, I see the... <laughs> okay. All right. Please don't... Don't take it personally, John. No, no. 
I'm glad that banana's getting put to good use. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, well, I, I'm going to ask you a quick question, Brian. Yeah. Just a yes or no answer will be uh, fine, whether it's possible. One thing I would like to see science work on, teleportation. Yes, it's already been done. Wow. <laughs> the single subatomic particles. <laughs> but... <laughs> never mind but. But <laughs> the principle is there. The principle so is there. So maybe. So maybe we can avoid the rush hour one day. OK. I have a question. OK. Uh, John. John has a question. Are science getting closer to discovering a cure to the norovirus? <laughs> no. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so, some biologists don't consider viruses to be alive because oh, they can, well, they can only reproduce. I've, I beg to differ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need a host to reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> This looks like a, a really weird nature show there, like you're observing... <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who's watching who. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to let him go home, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a great sport. Let's hear it again for John C. Riley. I'm John, thank you so much. There you go. Come on. I won't touch any of you. Yeah, you see. Take care.